Hello, I'm Caleb Ortner. I'm a master's student under Dr. Karen Ryder at Michigan State. I'm um, going to be talking about part of my master's project, uh, designing a better uh, interceding system for broadcast interceding. So what we were trying to do is to increase cover crop um, emergence and species diversity by improving seed to soil contact with the broadcast interceding. So you can see the aerial arrows on the screen here that we have a few seeds on the soil surface. That's what we're trying to get covered up so that we have the best emergence as possible. So some of the systems that we have that are already in place here, we have one of the kind of the gold standards of when most people talk about interseeding, the Penn State interseeder, where it uh, drills three rows of cover crops in between the corn rows. And you can do this up to about V7. And here we have some other um, broadcast methods that are used in Michigan. Uh, a little bit different that we can use with these ones is you can do it both early season and you can also do it later in the season when the corn starts to dry down. Um, one problem with these kinds of systems is you're not getting great seed to soil contact, so you're not getting, if you don't have the moisture, you're not going to get that great emergence. And if you do get a little bit of moisture and those cover crops emerge and then you don't get any moisture, those cover crops will die and they won't come up later in the season either. So to kind of use the best of both worlds here, we designed this interseeder. We based it off of Sean Waterman's interseeder out of Coleman, Michigan. Uh, it's a 400 John Deere rotary hole, and we put a game the air seeder on it where we broadcast the seed in front of the hose, and then we have the hose from the rotary hole work up the ground to get better establishment of that cover crop. To test this interseeder, we uh, had an experiment down at Kellogg Biological Station um, where we had cover crops were interseeded about V7 on June 26th. We had two mixtures and a control that I'll talk about here in a second. Um, we had two different seeding methods where we just had the Gandhi air seeder where we broadcast the seed in front of the hose. We, we didn't have the hose down at that time. And then we also had the uh, rotary hole and the Gandhi air seeder together to kind of look and see if that little bit of soil contact that we were making made a difference. And then we tested this across four different soil surfaces where we had a conventional tillage with no manure. We had manure applied and conventional tillage to incorporate before planting. And then we had a no-till with manure applied before planting and then a no-till with no manure applied. We used five tons of pentac manure. So the cover crops that we uh, used for this we had two mixes, our winter hardy mix, which is annual ryegrass at eight pounds an acre, crimson clover at four pounds an acre, dwarf vessel rate at 1.3 pounds per acre. Um, the second mixture we had was a winter kill mix, which is oats, which is 25 pounds the acre, winter pea, which is 20 pounds the acre, tillage radish, which is two pounds per acre. Uh, one thing to note is the seed size here of the oats and the winter pea is much larger than the rest of the seeds, and you'll kind of see a little bit of effect by that later here in some of the pictures we have later on in the presentation. So here's what those mixtures would look like. They were grown in perfect conditions, um, perfect sunlight, perfect moisture. Um, that's what you would get. You have the winter hardy mix here on the left and the winter kill mix on the right. So again, we interceded on June 26th. Um, corn is about B7. Uh, one thing to remember is we had above average rainfall this year. So uh, you can see here that our corn stand is not great. When we planted this about six hours after we planted it, we had about three inches of the rain that washed out quite a bit of our corn. Um, one thing also is after we planted this, we had about a half inch of rain within the first three days, three quarters of an inch the next within a week. So you can see kind of how well you're getting that little bit of soil contact that you're getting that seed. A little bit. So this is what uh, a winter hardy mix with just that gandy only in a no-till um, portion of the field. You see, you see a few rye, a few clover here and there. You don't have the great establishment, but you can see it's starting to come up. Um, here on the next slide, we have that with the rotary hole and the gandy together. See, so you get a little bit better establishment. You still got the rye, you got the clover. 
you can see a few rape seeds that are mixed in with this. So here we are with the winter kill mix with just the gandy only. You see a few radishes, that's about it. And that's kind of the one thing we were thinking with the seed size is that pea and the um, oats were just too big. They didn't get into that you know, hard packed ground as well. And you can see when we had the rubbery hoe down with it, you got quite a bit better establishment. You can see basically all this. You can see the radish and the oats. You don't see too many peas, but I think that's just because they need to have better coverage and more moisture than what they got this year. So uh, I just wanted to point this out. We had pretty good results by the fall. I didn't have the data ready for this. So um, you can see here that the we did have above average rainfall. The star is where we planted at. This is where we had a uh, about five inches above average rainfall. And then that trend kind of continued for a little bit before it dried up later in the season. So we had about a half inch of rain again after three days and three quarters within a week. And then we didn't really see many differences in the cover crops, emergence of 30 days in the conventional tillage with or without the manure. But we did see better emergence after interseeding the no-till with the interseeder versus just the game. So to have some future or future plans for this is we're going to have two research sites next year to kind of look at this a little bit more in depth and we also have um, a controlled environment going where you saw those pots with the what those mixtures would look like in ideal conditions growing in the grill chamber right now where we're looking at trying to find what ratio of these seeds species is the best so with that thanks for listening